But, I mean, you know, the story still continues in GoGo. Um, you know, things are still going on there and still changing. Do you get updates? Yeah. So we, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty close to all the scientists there and have been for, for years. You know, we're, we're friends and, and stay in touch. Um, I'm seeing one of them tonight, actually, who lives in Austin. Um, but they, they are often texting things that are happening now that they know we'd be interested in. Now, has there been thought about doing another series? Because um, this has obviously been very successful. Well, you know, I think, I mean, it's hard to say, you know, it's only been a few weeks. So it's hard to say how how successful it is yet. Because Netflix doesn't tell you. No, they don't tell you. Yeah, they're crafty with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, well, it's obviously anecdotally from people that I know. I mean, so right. many people recommended it before I watched it. I got so many text messages like, "You must watch this. This is right up your alley." So many people told me about it. <laughs> well, I think I think because of your interest, though, you might get a bit of a bias on sure. the sort of like overall conversation on it. Maybe I, d I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm assuming um, because people know you're in the chimps. I think, yeah, I mean, and I, re I read the Twitter feed each day. I can't resist. I'll refresh that, mm -hmm. see what people are saying about it. And really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the feedback. Um, you should be. But I don't know, yeah, whether it's going to get bigger or bigger or, or who knows. I mean, I personally and the whole team who who are involved in it you just kind of fall in love with that place mm. and the people who work there and the and all the chimps. You know, whether we were filming or not, you kind of just, well, you want to find out what's happening, what's happening in Gogo, because you're following that story, whether you yeah. film it or not. And I think we'll always be on a sort of like, you know, we want to find out. Is Abrams in charge? You know, um, yeah, there's things that are happening that we're constantly being updated about. I think we we we'd love to go into a second season, but I think that's you know quite an undertaking. It's a huge undertaking, but I think we learnt so much on the first one that I mean, you know, a lot of the pain about how to do it. We mm. sort of we it would be a much easier thing second time around. But also seems like one of the most unusual situations where there has been these embedded scientists in this area for 30 years mm. and these chimps are so accustomed to it i mean it's, it's like to try to reestablish that somewhere else yeah and then this is a very unusual group of chimpanzees too right it is i mean there there are other chimpanzee sites several other chimpanzee sites around africa where where they have a a similar you know the chimps are habituated long-term scientific projects you know jane Jane Goodall being the perfect example, you know, her, her project has been there long before the guys were studying in GoGo. So that's much longer term. You know, there's study sites in Thai and the Ivory Coast and Fongoli. Um, you know, there's, there's many of them. What's unique about Ngogo is, as well as having that level of access and, and data and sort of, so you just have so much information about the chimps, but there's also just a ton of chimps. And and they are quite unique in that the Ngogo territory is surrounded by forest in every direction. Whereas at other sites, often, you know, chimpanzee habitat is sort of bordered by uh, farmland or human settlements of some kind. So they're quite sort of, it's a little wild pocket in amongst uh, an area that is less wild. At and Gogo, and I, and I think this is unique for study sites of chimps. They have it, it's wild in every direction outside of there, so so that does impact their their behaviour and their sort of group dynamics because the edge of their territory is not like some land they can't go on. It's land they can take because it belongs to other chimps, mm. and so and you know whether you whether you enjoy watching that aspect of chimpanzee behavior or not, there's a, there's another layer to what, uh, to what happens in Gogo. Um, you know, loads of other chimpanzee sites, they, they have different things that they do. You know, for instance, in, 
in in Fongoli in Senegal, they use spears to hunt bush babies. You know, there's mm. sort of there's in every little in every different chimpanzee site, there's like a an associated unique behavior or or culture. Scientists wouldn't call it culture, but to you know, a simple way of looking at it, there's a different like sort of things that they do that are that are separate and different to other chimp groups. So you've obse- there's observed chimpanzees that use spears? There are, yeah. I haven't observed any any of them at all. It's not uh, I've never I've never been there or filmed that, but yes, they they use sticks. And but, they, but do they sharpen these sticks? You know, I don't know. And uh my, my partner Rosie actually m- made a film about those chimps. We're quite chimpy in our household. Uh and and she she'll be able to answer that better, but I I know that they u- they use spears, and I think they make spears. So I don't know whether they sharpen them, but they they certainly strip them down so that they are like a spear. Wow! And they and they jab in holes for for bush babies. What is a bush baby? It's like a little nocturnal primate. They're wow. very they're very cute. 